Hello everyone. So today we are going to take a look at a pre-painted collectible figurine from uh, Bandai, which is this um, Ban Presto DXF uh, line. Uh, DXF, which stands for a uh, deluxe figure. And this particular figurine is from the One Piece anime and specifically is from the One Piece, the Grand Nine Lady, Volume 7. And it is a figurine of uh, Nami in her outfit uh, during a particular story arc in the One Piece anime series, i.e. the Wano Country arc. So let's get started with the unboxing of this figurine and see what's inside. It's a miniature painter. I usually will paint up the figurines myself, but I also like to collect uh, pre-painted uh, figurines like the one you see here. I hope to give you my thought process and my views on this uh, pre-painted figurine from the eyes of a miniature painter. This is, as I mentioned earlier, Nami from the One Piece anime series. Uh, particularly, this is the Bandai Ban Presto DXF, the Grand Line Lady series, Volume 7. This is a product that is meant for the Japan market. Now, how you can tell is by that uh, golden sticker on the lower left corner. Let's open up this box and see what is inside. So most of the packaging is just uh, empty space, but there's a reason for this. Now, if a figurine is enclosed in a hard cardboard box, which has ample space around it, it actually offers better protection against damage during shipping. Nami comes already pre-assembled and pre-printed and what they give in this uh, particular product line is usually just the figurine itself and the base. So now let's just cut open the plastic and remove the figurine and the base from uh, its uh, packaging. The base is a very simple oval shape and it's just a monotone black. These are meant to be budget friendly uh, models, hence uh, the base is usually not so elaborate. So now let's take a closer look at Nami herself. For a pre-printed figure, I can tell you that the painting being done here is really very good for a budget line because this is uh, Bandai's uh, DXF or Deluxe Figure line. So, as I understand it, the paint job for such figures are usually of a higher quality. Now, what impressed me with this particular figurine is the fact that the colour scheme is very pleasing to the eye. You have the red Gunoichi outfit, the pink ribbon in behind, contrasting with her orange, bright, vivid orange hair. I'm particularly impressed by the fact that there are some shading done on her flesh or on the skin tone which is really impressive for a pre-printed figurine that is uh, fairly budget friendly. In fact, I got this uh, figurine at a discount of about 60 plus ringgit. Uh, it retails normally for about 89 ringgit in uh, Malaysia. The one thing I can see that is lacking in terms of the paint job is the fact that there's not much panel lining uh, done on the grooves. 
if you were to improve on the uh, hair for example you can actually give the hair a wash of a darker orange to give it a little bit more depth and for the armor that she's wearing around her clothes it can be actually paneline with a darker paint to bring out the details on the armor but as it is for a pre-painted figurine the paint job is extremely good so she's wearing high heels and I'm now trying to place her onto the base a simple uh, pack and hole connection on both her feet onto the base I'm just making sure I have the orientation of the legs to the connection correct so that I do not uh, force the legs onto the base and break the very tiny heels that she's wearing so that's her left leg already fixed uh, just uh, everything has come off but I think it's better for me to use the table as a supporting structure so that I can push Nami's legs onto the base securely uh, without uh, putting any extra tension on the heels previously I was like what you see me doing now I'm trying to put the legs onto the base without really having a good support structure so it's difficult to snap them into place but anyway they are in place now so that's Nami on the base Let's now have a close-up detailed 360 degree view of Nami in order to have a good look at all her details. In this pre-painted figurine of Nami, we see her wearing what is actually the fourth outfit in the Wano country art of the One Piece anime. Now, this outfit consists of a red kunoichi outfit with a pink floral pattern and in addition to that she is wearing an armor plate that is across her midsection and it is tied there with a yellow ribbon speaking of ribbon there is a larger pink ribbon behind her back which is mainly for decorative purposes Meanwhile, on her hair, you can find a yellow and turquoise flower brooch. And her ensemble is completed by the red colored high heels, which matches her outfit. Let's now delve into a close up detailed view of the upper half of this Nami figurine. Now, let's start with the hair, which has a very beautiful scalp of the individual strands of hair but it is in a monotone orange color. So if you're a painter, you might want to give it a wash so that the darker shade goes into the grooves and bring out the details of the hair more. The same goes for that yellow and turquoise brooch that Nami has on her hair. You would notice that Nami has a beautiful smile in this scalp. Her eyes are also nicely painted and the pearl earrings on her ear it's a very nice touch. So all in all, the upper half of Nami, especially the facial features and her head, which is a key characteristic of any figurine, is extremely well painted and well sculpted. Meanwhile, for the mid section of this Nami figurine, the color scheme is extremely pleasing to the eye. The paint job is very well done all within the lines, very clean. The only thing lacking perhaps is the depth to this uh, paint job, which can be resolved if you wish to, simply by applying either paint washers or by panel lining the relevant sections of her outfit. The shadings on her skin tone is definitely a positive for this small figurine and also little details like that compass and bracelet on her left wrist as well as the tattoo on her left arm. 
So the midsection of this Nami figurine is full of details. Not only that, it is very beautiful in terms of colour scheme. So overall, it's a great feature of this figurine. Lastly, we move on to the lower section of Nami, which is her legs and the uh, red high heel shoes that she has on. These high heel shoes are really beautiful, so much so that even the missus thinks they are gorgeous. Now, because Nami has long legs, and most of it is exposed and not covered up by clothing, then it is important to see whether her skin tone is nicely shaded. And in that, I'm pleasantly surprised because her skin tone has some very nice shadings on it, which is a great big positive for a figurine that is targeted more towards the budget collector. Now let's move on to summarize the positives and negatives of this figurine and see where it lies in a 5 tier rating system and also to see if it is worth putting into your collection. In conclusion, the positives for this Banpresto DXF The Grand Nine Lady Volume 7 Nami figurine is that the colour scheme is extremely pleasing to the eye. There are a lot of good details on the figurine such as Nami's outfit, the compass and bracelet on her left wrist, the facial features are very well proportioned, the eyes well painted, very good shadings on her skin tone. As for the negatives, the figurine is fairly small. It is about 16.5 cm tall, which is about 6.5 inches. And while the lack of shading on her outfit can count as a negative, but it's largely mitigated by the beautiful colour scheme, so I wouldn't really consider it a negative. And in a 5 tier ranking system, ranging from bronze all the way to diamond, Nami lands right smack in the middle with a rating of gold. While she isn't perfect, she is a figurine I wouldn't mind having in my collection, uh, especially if you are a One Piece fan. I hope you have found this video helpful. Please hit the like button on this video and please do also subscribe to my YouTube channel. As always, Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.